is written and we are working for Yahoo Media properties and at Yahoo Media we use MySQL uh, 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 at many places to store user generated content and uh, whenever we have a large data set we have to paginate through that on each page we have to display a subset of messages and and once the data set is going to grow and we have to display a small window of a data, it's going to take time to load. So I'm going to go through how we can write efficient query or design our uh, database or modify our interface to paginate efficiently. Uh, I'm going to skip this. Uh, these are a few common patterns you are going to see on various website. Some say you can go to previous and next. Some say you can go to any, any page, any time. There are various reasons to have these things. Some, some are going to display you exact number of pounds. Some say there's no count at all. Uh, first step to write efficient query is, is this. Uh, is you have, we have to use index to filter rows. And same index should be used to written rows in given order. If we can do it, we can have efficient query. That's a step one. Before going to this step, I would assume that uh, most of the people has gone through these three documents there. Is that assumption is right? I see some hands. I see 5% of hands going like that. So my fear is that the rest of the talk might not be very useful. You might have to come back, download the talk, read the document, and then read the rest of the pages on the talk. So I'll try to make it useful. Uh, the, uh, Take an example where we have three columns, A, B, C, and, and we have a key on all three columns. Uh, so in first, in, in first set, you see that there is an order by uh, A, A comma B, A comma B comma C, or all three are in descending order. So MySQL may use index to read rows in sorted order in this case, provided that there is no other index used to resolve that clause. In case two, it is going to use index to filter rows as well as to return rows in sorted order. In case three, it can't use index to return rows in sorted order. It means it has to do the file sort. So if you go through a document, I have uh, given link on the previous page, you will be able to understand why uh, yeah, this behavior. Uh, I'm going to walk through a simple, uh, simple uh, schema and apply pagination uh, techniques to this schema. Uh, so I have a messages table uh, that has a primary key as an ID, and user can post messages there. And so message has some content, title, and create time for the message. And there is one more column known as thumbs up. Means how many people like this message? It might be rating for that message or vote, vote for that message. And we have a key, a secondary key on thumbs up for my ID. I'll cover why ID is there on later slides. And uh, size of this uh, table is around 50 million messages. So it is around 26 gig on this. And second index is quite small. It can fit into them very easily. And primary use case on this table is uh, we want to paginate by time. On first page, I want to display uh, most recent messages, and then I can go next and see all the messages. Uh, and the second use case is we want to see messages sorted by popularity. Means the message that has the most number of thumbs up should be on the first page, and we can scroll through the windows. Uh, this is a typical query we are going to see uh, whenever uh, some, someone is going to do pagination. The easiest option with MySQL is to simply use limit, offset, and page size. So you can go to any number of pages directly, and initially it looks like a magic. Means you tell him to give me a, a hundred page, and it, it, it is going to give you. But behind the scene, it is not a magic. The magic part is only this. Uh, execution stops as soon as it finds given number of rows. Before that, it has it might have to sort. You have a right index, it will not sort. Good thing, but still it has to read that many rows in order to return you a small number of rows. 
And in this case, uh, I'm doing order by ID. I'm not using order by on period time. The reason being, ID order is the same as period time order. So you can save space. There's no need to create index on period time. And I have seen most of the time, uh, or often we can use ID in place of period time and save space. We want to uh, get a page with some large number of offset. And when we execute this query, we do explain on this query. It is going to be index scan, good thing. And the only issue is that it has to read 10,020 rows in order to return 20 rows. So it is going to throw the 10,000 rows. And this is going to increase IO on our system. Uh, as I said that, Large offset has huge performance implications. Uh, uh, it is going to increase your active data set. And that's why it is going to increase I on your box. And a small percentage of the request to deep pages to high offset can uh, uh, down response time, uh, increase response time for your website. And even uh, First page might not be loaded as fast as it used to be. And the last problem with pagination is people tend to display the count. And on each request, they have to count messages and then display messages. On first page, I'm going to count and then say 1 to 20 of this number, big number. On second page, I have to say 20 to 40 of this big number. On second page, I'm going to count it again. On each request, I have to count. This is a simple solution, a step back. Why we need these things? Does user really need count? Don't need to give him count. He, he has to page in it. Let him page in it. There's no need of count. And second option is that don't <laughs> let him go deep. And problem is solved. Uh, how can we avoid count? Uh, we have to say that you can see older or newer, you can go to next previous, but there's no need to display count and it doesn't affect user experience, I would say, up to some extent. Uh, other option is to cache count. You can display some stale count. User doesn't care about exit number, it might be plus one or plus two, and we can still avoid that IO implications. Uh, other option is to just simply say magnitude. Uh, last one uh, we are using at uh, Yahoo message boards. On each write or each tree, we peak, we modify the count simply. Update count equal to count <coughs> plus one or count equal to count minus one. Uh, how can we avoid offset? Uh, again, go back to the user interface. Simply say next and previous. Do not let user jump to any page, any other page, page like end page, ten page, page, page. Do not let him go there. Let him go by next, 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 or previous, previous, previous. Uh, limit n is fine. That's a good feature in my code, like execution stops as soon as you find n number of rows. But limit n comma is, and m comma n is very bad because it has to now read n plus n rows. Uh, so the idea here is to can we move this n? from limit to where clause. Can we make our where clause more restrictive uh, so that it can use index and directly find what rows it has to return? And for that, we need some proof. And we have to provide that proof to our SQL when we write our SQL. Uh, so here's a three-page example. On first page, I have messages from 150 to 100. Uh, ID, that's ID in decremental order. So I have most of the recent messages on top and the oldest one bottom. So on first page, my first page is going to stop at ID equal to 100. So I can pass this ID equal to 100 as the last scene or last left of ID to the next page. And the moment I have this value on the next page, I can use this value to make my where clause more restrictive. And the same technique we can apply on the page two. Now we are on the page two. We want to go see previous page. On previous link, we can say last seen ID to the right here, that's a top ID on the second page. So uh, this is the, this uh, URL is going to look like this. We have last seen equal to 100, 
and we are going to modify our where clause. In where clause, we are going to say id less than 100. And if we directly jump to that page and return the page, there's no offset here. Offset is missing. The previous is a little bit tricky. On previous, you have to change your condition. You have to say id is greater than 98, and you have to change the order as well. You have to say id is empty so that you can get the previous page. So once you get this data set, you have to reverse it and send it back to the user. This is explained for new statement. If you see the type, the type was indexed on the previous case, and now it is range, and range is going to be work much better than index scan. A given solution was working for ID because ID was unique. What about thumbs up? Thumbs up is not unique. Now we can't use that value as a pointer to find the next page. Here I have each time that I uh, thumbs up value has repeated three times, 98, 98, 98 on page one. And two values are there on the page two as well. So I can't say thumbs up is less than 98. It is going to return me fewer number of rows. And so can we say thumbs up less than or equal to 98? It can. It is going to give me few extra rows. So we need one additional clause, additional end condition to filter out these extra rows. Can we do it? What we have to do, uh, we have to find some additional column. We can consider thumbs up as a major number. So when we have series of major dot minor number, we can get things in order. And major number is going to repeat many times, but minor number would be some order. And in this case, we can use primary key as minor number. We have primary key that's unique across all the rows. So we can combine these two things, and we can write our SQL in a better way. Uh, this is the first page. Uh, so here I have modified order by. I'm going to say order by thumbs up descending, and I added one more condition, I <laughs> descending. And this gives me the uh, unique order of rows, and this combination is unique. So now I can rebuild my condition and say thumbs up is less than or equal to 98, and I have to filter rows by this extra condition. So I say ID less than 30, or thumbs up is less than 98, and next page would be available. And again, there is no offset here. So this is a new query, and we can write this query in a better way. If we can use self-join, and get the rows, get the IDs first, and then get the messages, uh, the rest of the things. And here I'm going to take advantage of the cover index. So I'm going to cover, so this M1 is covered using index, so it's pretty fast. And once it is going to get uh, 20 rows, don't look at number of rows uh, given by the optimizer. That's just an estimate. And it doesn't take care of limit clause as well. It don't know about limit. That's why it is doing like that. It is going to be only 20 rows using range. So it will directly go to the index, click next 20 rows, return IDs, then it is going to join with M2 and return the complete data. Uh, so when I did some test, uh, this test was on primary key. Uh, this is from page number one to page number 30. Uh, and there were 20 messages on each page. So you can see that that blue line is going up north. It might get out of the screen somewhere there. But the red line is going quite straight. It's flat. So if you remove offset, doesn't matter how deep you are going. You are getting the same response time. This was done on secondary key with self jointing. Again, it's quite similar, but going a little bit up. You can see the magnitude of difference. <coughs> around 0 0.6 millisecond versus 1 millisecond for page number 30. Another gain we had because of this is the throughput. Uh, this test is done on some uh, uh, desktop, and this is not done on real scenario, and with a small data set and a small index. 
So the CPU was a bottleneck there. Even if CPU is bottleneck, uh, uh, without offset you can do 3.7k qubit per second. And with offset it is going, going only 600 qubit per second. This is the when CPU is bottleneck. When you are in production and your database is going to be huge, you are going to get IO bottleneck before you are going to get CPU bottleneck because of offset. There is one bonus point with this method. Uh, so since MPC is a scrolling window, I'm on page one, I go to page two, page three. So this is, and by the time say I'm on, I'm reading page four. And when I'm reading page four, someone might post a message, new message. This new message is going to appear on page one. And the moment this new message come appear on page one, all the messages are going to scroll by one slot. So I'm reading all page, but on the back end that page has been moved. And when I click next, I'm going to see one message from previous page that I have already seen. And this is the most common scenario. This happens most often with message boards. But if we apply this new approach, we know where we left off. So we start from that point. So no duplicate messages. Uh, and we are not going to display the same message to user twice. And this thing is true for skipping messages. I'm on page four, 10 messages deleted on page one. I click next, I get the same page. So new approach is mitigate that issue. Uh, this approach has few drawbacks. Uh, uh, So-called SEO expert says that uh, we should have many links on a given page. And uh, so that with fewer number of deep drives, they can crawl your site. Uh, so can we resolve that issue? And one of them is to uh, say I'm on page five. Uh, I can retrieve, uh, uh, we can go back. I'm on page one. I want to display link for page two, three, and four. I can retrieve one, two, three, four at once at the back end and create links with left of value, last seen value in each link. But this approach, I have to read more rows at the back end, even if nobody is going to send a request for the next page. Second option is to combine this clue with some offset. So we can have a small number. So I, on page one, I'm going to retrieve first page only. I have a link for next using this clue. And if I want to have link for page three, what I am going to do, I'm going to pass a clue for page two plus offset value for page three from page two. And at the back end, we can have a small offset with the clue. So in this approach, offset is not never going to be used. So performance implication would be not that much. Uh, it has one additional concern. Uh, URLs are dynamic. The last scene is changing in URL every time. Whenever new messages come in, the URL is changing. So over, over the time, you might uh, search engine might crawl such multiple URLs and index it, and it might remain there forever. 